Thank you very much. Medicines traditionally used to treat HIV, Ebola and malaria are being tested to treat coronavirus. In the fight against the virus, Chinese doctors have been using some antiretrovirals to treat people infected by COVID-19. It's claimed more than 1,700 lives. To discuss this, we're joined by Helen Rees from the South African Health Products Regulatory Authority. Good morning to you. Good morning. So we're taking this seriously now, looking at uh, HIV, uh, malaria and Ebola? Well, certainly the world is taking it very seriously and obviously China more than anybody because the big priority here is, is therapeutics. How can we treat people with so many people infected? Um, so what happens in this sort of situation is you, get, you, you would look at what existing drugs are out there. Rather, you can't start from nothing no. in an emergency. And so what has been looked at and is being looked at are the antiviral drugs. Um, as you said, two of the drugs that we use for HIV um, and a new drug, uh, remdesivir, which has been tested, was tested for SARS and MERS, which are viruses very closely related to the COVID-19 that we're currently dealing with. Do we have enough drugs? I mean, HIV, if there's going to be a run on it, where does it leave those who need it? Well, I mean, I think that these are very important questions. We don't know yet whether this is effective. And in China, what's happening is proper trials are being designed so to evaluate these antivirals. But as you mentioned as well, they're looking at things like chloroquine, which is traditionally has been used to, with, for malaria treatment, um, and other drugs uh, that are antiviral, a drug called interferon that we also use for other viruses, but also for cancer patients. Uh, but they're properly designed trials that are being done. So at the moment, we're not looking at an enormous run and demand. But obviously, if this becomes a pandemic and becomes a worldwide problem, then there will be questions about if we do find things that are successful for treatment, have we got enough drug? And already in South Africa, there has been a discussion about what the impact even of the, the coronavirus outbreak is on accessing drugs, because as you know, the flow of the free flow of, of products from China um, has, has also been impacted by this and outbreak. What concerns me is the sorry state of our hospitals. I mean, if there were to be an infection in some of them, I mean, it could spread pretty quickly. And again, there's a, a problem of access to medication there. Well, I think this is why what every country is trying to do is, and including South Africa very strongly, is to try and identify cases early. What you want to do is, if there is a case, and it's highly likely that with the way that we're seeing cases occur in individual countries around the world, that, that there might well be a case. There's been a case now in Egypt. So what you need to do is to have the ability to identify early and then contain that case with good infection control, but trace all of those people who have been in contact. So should there be a case, that's your first line of defense, because what you don't want to have is what we're seeing now in Wuhan in any country. So what has been working? I believe that uh, blood from cured victims is helping. How does that work? And how do you cure a victim if there is no cure? Well, remember that most people, you mentioned the figures, the majority of people who are exposed, about 80% will have a mild illness. Um, so we'll if have, a mild illness, okay. they won't be very sick. Only about 20% get very sick, and a much, much, much smaller proportion at the moment, as far as we can see, are getting to the point where they're dying from the infection. So a lot of people will have the illness, will be laboratory confirmed, and then will get better by nature. There might be symptomatic support, things for fever and helping breathing, but, they, but nature you know, their own immune system will clear that. Mm. And that's where you can get this, this recovery of blood, if you like, where, where you can look and see whether you can use that to treat uh, people who are much sicker. These are all experimental, however, um, but it's something that we do whenever we have a bad outbreak and we don't have good therapeutic options, such as Ebola. We did the same thing with Ebola. And very briefly, what is it in the treatment for <laughs> Ebola and malaria and HIV that would put a stop to it? Well, they're somewhat different. The, the, the drugs that we're looking at for Ebola and for HIV are antiviral drugs. Mm. So they act uh, to prevent the virus uh, taking hold and, and multiplying in the body. That's how they would work. So they are seen as antiviral drugs. Mm. The chloroquine, it's not, I'm not sure, and I was at a meeting at WHO last week, it's not clear to me quite what the mechanism of action would be, but clearly the scientists in China who are looking at this think there might be a... But, but what you will look for is exactly what you said. Could this work? 
and how would it work and how can we test it and that's what's happening in China at the moment. Hilary, it's good to talk to you. Thank, Thank you. you.